right now what I want to show you is silicone spread. Um, this, as you can see, part B is yellow and part A is white. And instead of being a clay-like consistency like silicone plastique, this is actually a paste. A lot of people say, well, when would I use one product over another? And I want you to imagine that you're somewhere and we have a plaque and this plaque is hanging up on a wall, okay? Or this is part of some type of stone sculpture or something, something like this is, is a lamp in your hotel room, okay? And you might see this spray of flowers and think, man, I would love to have that, right? Well, silicone spread, one of its many advantages is, is that you can put it on a vertical surface like this because we apply it in three different layers, okay? So let me give you another example really quick. What do you think of this? I get all these things at, I like to go to antique shows. These were really popular in the 50s, you know? How do you like that? Maybe, maybe you don't want this whole thing, but maybe you want that flower. Maybe that's really, really perfect for the style of cake or, or, or some type of a craft that you're doing. So what I want to show you is how silicone spread works and how you can literally lift this design and take it with you. What I have here is a plaque that we're actually going to make a mold over. And um, I know that you've see, you see some of the silicone spread already applied. I just want you to ignore that for now. Everything will make sense as we go along. So here I have pre-measured amounts of part A and B. I have my two mixing containers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to combine parts A and B. Now this is a paste, so it's a slightly different consistency. You should think of silicone spread as a consistency between a solid like clay and silicone plastique, and a liquid like Copyflex, which I'm going to show you after I show you this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take both parts and I'm going to put them in the same container. Remember, the different colors are practically meaningless, okay? What they are there for is to give you a visual cue to let you know when both parts have been thoroughly mixed. Now, because I'm not mixing this in my hands, and we started out in a container, we obviously are going to have remnants of unmixed material. Okay? In fact, you can see it right there. You see the white right here? You see that was clinging to the side or maybe the bottom corner of this uh, container. And so what I'm doing is I'm transferring everything into a second identical mixing container. I'm making sure that I'm scraping the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm taking what was on the bottom and the sides and I'm putting them on top. And now we're going to mix again. This is the way that you ensure that you have a complete mix, okay? Now, let me give you an idea what the consistency is like. See that? Okay. It will sag, okay? If you have a lot and it's really thick, see, it will flow. But if we don't have a lot, it stays put. Now, one of the things to remember is, is that one of the ways, one of the things you can do if you're applying to a vertical or a horizontal surface and you need it even thicker than it is right now, just wait. Give it five minutes and check its consistency. It's going to be thicker. If it's not thick enough, wait another five minutes or maybe two minutes. And this silicone spread is always curing into a flexible you know, firm rubber. So use that to your advantage to regulate the thickness of the material and customize it for your application. Now, here's our plaque, and let's just imagine that this peony or rose 
on this plaque is something that we want to lift. I want you to know this, that right from here down, from here down, we have applied no silicone spread. From this section to this section, we've applied one coat. And from this section to this section, we've applied two. Now I hope I'm going to make sense of this, but what I want you to do, first I'm going to show you an application vertically. Okay, so you know my scenario, this is on a wall in a hotel room, you know, or somewhere and you really want it. Okay, so you can see how I'm applying it and it's not going to drip down anywhere. Now just for ease, I'm going to lay this flat so I can show you the different steps, okay? Now, right here on this bottom section of the plaque, and I'm not going to cover the whole plaque, I just want the flower design. I do want to make sure that I always have about an inch of extra silicone around the sides. Don't do it exactly to the design, but give yourself some, some extra. And when I show you this cured mold, you're going to understand why that's important. But what I'm doing here is just like I did with the silicone plastique. I'm using this brush and I'm making sure that I'm getting the silicone spread coated and into every detail. And because I can apply it so thin and because I have the time for application, I can really make sure that I'm not trapping air and that I'm getting absolutely every detail. Okay? So you can see how this works. Stroke it as much as you like. I know that this looks rough to you right now, but if you look at these other areas, it settles into something that's silky smooth and beautiful to look at. So don't worry about the texture of it when you're brushing. What you really should do is make sure that you've worked it into every detail. Now, Silicone spread cures in two hours, so that means you have about 12 to 15 minutes work time in order to paint it on. And then what you should do is you should let it cure. Now let's say you're in a hurry. Silicone spread has to be applied in three different layers, so it's a little, you know, more time consuming. But you're in a hurry. Okay, you should wait a minimum of about one hour and what will happen is is the silicone spread will become half cured. That means that it isn't totally cured but it's developed enough structure so that when I touch it it's very very sticky but it's no longer a paste. It will, no, it will not come off on your finger like this. Okay, It will be really tacky. Okay but it will remain on the plaque and not come off on your finger. That means that it's ready for your second coat. Now, let's say you're not in a hurry. You can apply the second layer. You can do the first layer at night before you go to bed, and then when you wake up in the morning, apply the second coat. You can wait three days and apply the second coat. One coat will always bond to the next. I was just addressing situations if you're in a hurry, you can wait around one hour to get it to its half cured stage. All right, so if we look at this plaque, you can see that from here to here, I've applied one coat and a while back, about an hour and a half ago, I applied one coat to this section, okay? So I'm not gonna apply anything here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you once you have one coat down, the skim coat, what does the second coat look like? And what we do is the second coat is quite different, okay? Notice how thickly I'm applying the silicone spread now, okay? And you use your brush in order to really, really get it on thick, okay? And, you know, your brush almost becomes something similar to a spatula, okay? And you're going to apply it nice and thick. 
And on all the high spots, you want to make sure that you kind of lump it on there, okay? Because the high spots on the object that you're duplicating will result in the thinnest, weakest sections of your mold if you don't really get it on there, okay? So the second coat, as you can see, is applied with a brush, but much thicker. Again, don't worry about how rough it looks because it will settle down during the curing process. Okay, so this is my second coat and you can see that we still have areas that are sticking through but in general we've applied a coating that is twice, maybe four times as thick as our first skim coat. Okay, now what do we do when the second coat has half cured or fully cured? Well, now what we do is we take a spatula, and this now is how you apply the third coat, okay? Now what we're doing is we're spreading it over, and we're really making sure that we cover everything, the high parts, anything that's really, really sticking up there. It's really kind of like frosting a cake. Um, and you just want to make sure that you're not stingy here because this is your final coat. And your goal is to establish a layer that's about a quarter of an inch thick. You're really creating a skin of silicone that is going to coat and the, the object you want to duplicate and make a beautifully thin mold. This is a very economical process. If you were going to pour this in liquid silicone, you may use twice to as much as four times more silicone than when you're making a skin mold like this. So, see, just get this action here. Just see what I'm doing. I'm really, really putting it on, making sure I'm not trapping air, but making it nice and thick, conscious of the high areas, making sure that I've applied it. So let's go back to our scenario, okay? This design was on a lamp in your hotel room while you're staying somewhere. You can see, you see? We've applied it to a vertical surface. It's not going anywhere. It's just going to actually cure right on this surface and we're gonna peel it off like magic. Now it's time to explore the mold that we made with silicone spread. And if you'll remember, we we applied the silicone spread in three coats over this plaque. And so, once again, what I'd like to do is unmold, um, use the mold, and I packed it with different colors of fondant um, in order to show you how well we can reproduce this design. So, there we go. And as you can see, Every detail of this plaque was duplicated very well with the silicone spread. And we captured all the petals of the roses and the venation of the leaves and even the writing down at the bottom um, on this plaque. So this will show you that really all of these mold making materials do a very excellent job of reproducing the details from an object because they're all food grade, you could then use that mold to represent um, this, the, the once rigid object in chocolate or fondant or you can pour isomalt and cook sugar into this material because it's resistant to temperatures over 400 degrees Fahrenheit, unaffected by freezing. So really when, when it all comes together, what you can do is make your own molds of your own designs and then use that mold for practically anything in order to reproduce that design.